Josiah Gorgas July 1, 1818, to May 15, 1883, was one of the few Northern-born Confederate generals and was later president of the University of Alabama. As Chief of Ordnance during the American Civil War, Gorgas managed to keep the Confederate armies well supplied with weapons and ammunition, despite the Union blockade and even though the South had hardly any munitions industry before the war began. In this effort he also worked closely with the Fraser, Trenholm shipping company that brought in shipments of ordnance by means of blockade runners. He kept diaries during the Civil War which are now a popular subject of study for historians. <laughs> Early life Josiah Gorgas was born near Elizabethtown in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. He was graduated from West Point in 1841 and was assigned to the Ordnance Department. He served in the Mexican-American War and was promoted to captain in 1855. In 1853, he married Amelia Gale, daughter of former Alabama Governor John Gale. Gorgas served in arsenals in different parts of the country before the Civil War broke out. Early in his career, Gorgas served at Watervliet Arsenal near Troy, New York, and at the Detroit Arsenal. Following the Mexican-American War, Gorgas served in Pennsylvania and in November 1851 was transferred to Fort Monroe in Virginia. There he began his association with the Tredegar Iron Company, which would become an important southern foundry once the Civil War began. Gorgas went on to serve at the Mount Vernon Arsenal north of Mobile, Alabama beginning in 1853. He was commanding the Frankfurt Arsenal when he resigned from the United States Army on March 21, 1861, effective April 3. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Civil War. Having made the decision to participate in the secession, apparently motivated as much because of professional conflicts as by political principle, he moved to Richmond and became Chief of Ordnance for the Confederacy with the rank of Major. Having served in nearly every arsenal in the nation he was the perfect choice for the position. In this capacity, he worked to create an armaments industry almost from scratch. The South had no foundry except the Tredegar Iron Works. There were no rifle works except small arsenals in Richmond, and Fayetteville, North Carolina, plus the captured machines from the U.S. arsenal in Harper's Ferry. In the procurement of arms Gorgas also corresponded with Charles Priolo, who headed Trenholm's Liverpool office, arranging for the shipping of arms and other supplies to the Confederacy. Most of the arms sent to the Confederacy departed from Liverpool. During the summer of 1861, Gorgas stockpiled supplies and prepared his first load of cargo while the Trenholm Company procured a suitable ship for the voyage. A 1,200 ton iron hulled steamer, the Bermuda, was chosen to make the voyage. Gorgas established armories and foundries, found alternative sources for saltpeter, and created a huge gunpowder mill at the Augusta Arsenal. Thanks to his efforts, the Southern armies never lacked weapons, though they were short on almost everything else. On November 10, 1864, Gorgas was promoted to Brigadier General. <inaudible> Postbellum After the war, Gorgas purchased an interest in the Briarfield Furnace in Bibb County, near Ashby in Alabama, which had helped supply the in Confederate Naval Ordnance Works in Selma. The other directors appointed him to manage the iron works and he moved his family to the furnace site. Due to high operating and management costs he was forced to lease the iron works after just a couple of years in operation. In 1870 Gorgas accepted a position at the newly established University of the South in Sewanee, Tennessee. His position there was marked by discord with the Board of Trustees and the stress of keeping the university financially afloat. In 1878, he was elected 8th president of the University of Alabama. When he was forced to resign due to ill health, the trustees created the position of librarian for him, the position in which his wife was to succeed him. Upon his resignation as president, the university allowed the Gorgas family to move into the Pratt House, which also housed the campus post office and student hospital. The building had originally been the 1829 dining hall and later converted to a faculty residence in 1847. The building was dedicated as a memorial to the family in 1944, and became a museum now known as the Gorgas House upon the death of the last two surviving Gorgas children in 1953. <laughs> death and legacy 
Gorgas died at the age of 65 in Tuscaloosa in 1883, and was buried at Evergreen Cemetery. His widow Amelia served as the university's librarian for 23 years after his death and the main university library is named the Amelia Gale Gorgas Library in her honor. Their oldest son, William Crawford Gorgas born 1854, served as Surgeon General of the U.S. Army and is credited with implementing preventative measures against yellow fever and malaria that allowed for the completion of the Panama Canal. See also Blockade runners of the American Civil War Gorgas machine gun List of American Civil War generals Confederate equals equals notes <laughs>